Hello and welcome to episode 17 of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. This is Brandon. This is Brad. We are Nick Jones List this week. Nick Jones List? Yep. Okay. <laughs> What's up with that? Uh, I believe he had made prior plans. Yeah, our schedules are pretty hectic this week and we thought we were going to record in the afternoon but that did not come to fruition so we had to re- get up at 7 o'clock in the morning and record. So Nick had made p- prior plans but he'll be in the back next week. So all you ladies who tuned in to listen, I apologize, but he will be back. Our voices will have to do for now. <laughs> Alright, so treasure hunting? Yeah, let's go straight into treasure hunting. I only found a few items this week I've been missing every time I go. I actually went to Dimple a few times out of the week, and I couldn't find anything. They just kept having crap. And then a whole crap load of NES games came in. I rounded the corner where their bin is. And I saw like 13 NES games. I was like, ooh, but no. Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, Wizards and Warriors, some game called Stealth. Bullshit right there. Did you see the games I bought? No. Because you named off like two of them um, that I just picked up. Are you serious? No, no, no. Okay, I was about to say, well, shoot, I'm about to spin the wheel of pleasure then. (laughs) But I did find a few items and we'll reveal those. Okay. So, uh, I'll go in and start off with the Dragon Ball cards I was able to sell last week. I didn't want to come in and here and be like, Oh, this Infernape is worth $10, and then it not sell. Well, you have to sell it as a set. The Pokemon <laughs> card, you know that. Every time we put up Pokemon cards and sell them individually, they never sell. You have to put them in a binder and put show the foils off, and you have to sell them as a bundle. Yeah, I'll do that when, when these auctions and I'll just put them all together. I put up like 24 different cards, took me 3 hours, and none of them bit. I've got Metagross up there, all these Infernapes and Giratinas, and uh, what else? A bunch of Dialgas, a Palkia, no one wants them. Not at, not individually. <clears throat> so I'll put them up as a set. Alright, so first up was Dragon Ball promos, uh, Earth Dragon Ball 3 and Earth Dragon Ball 6 promo. Which one was that? Third. Oh, the the alternate prints. Okay, I had three and six, and that sold for eight fifty. Okay, massive technology promo from Cell Game Saga sold for a dollar. Uh, Raditz MP three set from Saiyan Saga sold for a dollar twenty five. Yeah, those never sell. Uh, Vegeta sells them. Yeah. So that, hold on, that's eight fifty a dollar. Do you have it all totaled up? No. Oh, oh okay. Good, good prep work, <laughs> Brandon. <laughs> well, kind, yeah, I do, because I sent you the email. Remember that all broken out? But do you have the total right here? I have it in my head. <laughs> okay. <laughs> then I don't have to do any addition. Okay. Uh, and then after that was Gohan, Trunks Saga, 1 through 4. Level 4 was Foil from Frieza Saga. Ooh. That sold for a whopping 225 Are you serious? Yeah. Wow. I was disappointed in that one. Remember that one time I put up all those personalities, and that one Gohan set f- sold for a hundred and that was crazy. And I was like, "Oh, he's show bidding! He's show bidding!" Heck no, we don't show bid. And I was like, I looked at it, and it was like one hundred eighteen dollars. I was like, "Holy shit!" Yeah. And then some guy uh, was like, "I'll I'll buy all your personalities off you for fifty bucks." I was like, "Dude, go get a life. Yeah. I'm not dumb." Yeah. So that all was just from one buyer, Sadie. Oh, Sadie? Yeah. Oh, okay. I know her. Not personally, but I know of her. And then there was... Oh, this I didn't send to you yet, because the guy didn't pay yet. It was a Piccolo set 1 through 4. Saiyan Saga personality level 4 was from Trunk Saga. That sold for 5 bucks. Oh, okay. Uh, Piccolo level 4, Foil Limited from Frieza Saga, sold for three twenty five. To Piccolo 2R. He was the only one that... He really wanted that card. He didn't bid on any, any of my other auctions. And then there was a vinegar set. Uh, one through three limited. Trunk Saga sold for eight fifty, uh, And that totaled $30.50. Okay, so this was the part of the $36 that you won. Okay. So that's $30.50. Yeah. Cool. Okay, then um, 
Oh, Orange Style Mastery. From what saga? Trunks Limited sold for five bucks. Non foil? Wow. Yep. Forgot about that one. Yeah, I think that was it. Yep, that's it for the Dragon Ball cards. There's some ending today. I don't know if they're going to be as big as the other ones, but cool. Yep. So, did you want to go ahead and reveal some stuff? Or yeah. did you want me to reveal mine? I'll reveal a few of my minor pieces. Oh, I went to Dimple and I felt such gratification. Last week, you guys heard where I went and they wouldn't let me see any of the games behind the counter and I was so angry but this time I brought these four games up and the guy's like oh let me see what you scored he was like oh this game I'll reveal it last he's like I didn't even know it was out there they must have just put it out yesterday I was like yeah he's like yeah a few weeks ago this guy came in and sold a bunch of Nintendo games and I got Battletoads I'm like oh I already have that He's all jizzing off of Battletoads. Yeah. What a moron. And then uh, he said, I said, he said, oh, we were like, he should sell those on eBay. And I was like, yeah, that's what I'm going to do with this game. And the look on his face was priceless. So first game is from the Master System. Master System. Mega cartridge only. Sh oh, Shinobi? Yeah. That's tight. Yep. How much is that worth? Seven dollars. That's tight. Shinobi. Cool. So I got two items. So I'll just reveal mine. Are you still in contention of spinning the wheel of pleasure? Yeah. Oh, we're really scraping the barrel here. <laughs> strategy guide. <laughs> it's the Final Fantasy Chronicles strategy okay, guide. Yeah, that one's old. With uh, Chrono Trigger. And, you know, Chrono Trigger, it tells you how to get every ending in there. Oh, that's tight. Where'd you got this? A dimple? Yeah, there, right there. A dimple sticker on it. From the Arden one? Yep. Wow, you only paid six ninety nine. Yep. How much is it worth? 25 Oh, that's good. My second tight. I'm going to have to part with it. I'm thinking we should just sell it because Game Facts, you could just look online and to find the endings but it's cool to have a guide for I, it i think this is uh like a one once look over and then you could be done with it yeah i'll have to look at that all right that's cool so that's 25 right there and then we'll go with the a sega genesis cart oh. for a dollar 99 <laughs> beavis and butthead yep. ma13 rating that's hecka funny that's pretty cool. I, I like this game. Uh, you could fart on people. And remember, uh, we actually went out of order when we went to the, the place of their employment, the burger joint. And we had to find the passcode. Mm. And we didn't know what the passcode was. And I just typed in butthead and was able to go in. Uh, so the, the passcode was butthead? Yeah. That's tight. I forgot how much this one was worth. Let me look it up. Okay. $7. Dang. Okay, I'm going to reveal my last item right here. What's that? A Star Wars album? The record. Oh, okay. Does it play the actual movie, or is it the John Williams? This is a soundtrack. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. And it's got the, the original poster. Oh wow! I looked it up online. Two sold for fifty dollars. Oh okay. You have the original poster. <clears throat> oh, that's tight. So that gives me a grand total of seventy-five dollars. Oh, what am I at? Forty-four fifty. There was one that sold for a hundred, but that's like mint condition. Oh, it was it was still used, but I don't think we could get a hundred for that. But we could get fifty for that. Wow, Goodwill two dollars. I just saw it sitting there on the bottom. It just said Star Wars. I was like, oh, I got to <laughs> look that up. And I'm so glad I got a smartphone. Like a, a couple months ago, I finally got a smartphone, so I was able to look it up in the store. Yeah. <clears throat> Next. Is this your big reveal or no? No. Oh, no. man. Okay. Pre-owned. NES cart. The Guardian Legend. That's cool. We have this, though, right? Uh, I think so. Yeah, we have this. <clears throat> That's cool. Made by Border Bund. Action Series. Official Nintendo Seal of Quality. Previously rented from videos to go. How much? Ten fifty. Fifty five dollars. Are you kidding me? No. Here's a big reveal. Alright. 
It's Nintendo Kart. Do we have this game? Yeah. Okay. Oh, Castlevania. The original. That's tight. Was that like 18? 20. It's 20 exactly. Tie. Wow. First time in Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia history, there's a tie. So what are we going to do? I don't know. Both spin the wheel of pleasure, I guess. There's no one here to videotape the wheel of pain, so... Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. That's cool. Alright. Do you want to spin first, or do you want me to? Uh, I will. Fourteen. Ten dollars in treasure added to your next week bank. Okay, I could live with that. Well, at least it's not a corn dog. <laughs> you should be able to live with anything. I get eight. eight. Five dollars. Okay. Okay, so. Good treasure hunting score. Twenty dollars on Castlevania. That's yep. tight. Okay, so do we want to go into our top five list? Yeah. We're actually going to, uh, instead of a um, game of the week, we we're going to talk speak about Kick-Ass 2, but Nick wanted to speak on that as well because we just saw that movie when it came out. So our top five list is going to be top five superhero movies. Okay, superhero movies, you know, usually don't translate well over to movies from the comic book. We actually want to go ahead and discuss our favorite movies that are superhero based. You know, we used to collect comic books, we collect comic cards. So we're really big into comics as well. We're not like super, super big into them. Like, oh yeah, that happened in Superman number 348 or whatever, but we, we enjoy them. So we want to go. That was the first appearance of the Shut second. Shut up. <laughs> Uh, so we we just want to go in and discuss the superhero movies, uh, kind of relate to all you comic book guys out there. So top five superhero movies that we like. So your number five is Faust or Faust. I I pronounce it Faust because uh, when I first saw it at Big Ten video, uh, I would walk around and hold my hand like this and do Faust, and Matt would look at me and he'd do it back. Okay, so. I never heard of that movie. Do is the guy's name in that movie Faust? No. Or Faust? His demon form is. But do they say his name in that movie? Probably. Okay. Yeah. I only Yeah, 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 they do. Okay. So I rewatched like half of it t this morning just to get just to get my memory up on it. Um basically he's there's this guy who starts off in a mental institution and he's telling his story in flashbacks. And, like, the first flashback is him and his girlfriend uh, sitting in his painting studio about to do the wild thing. And all of a sudden these guys break in and say, Do you remember who smuggled you into this country? And she's like, No, no. And then they're like, It's time to pay pay the piper or something like that. And they end up killing her. And so the guy is all love torn and he doesn't know what to do with himself. So he goes to the this bridge and he's going to kill himself. But then all of a sudden this guy comes up in a limousine looking very menacing. And he's like, I could give you vengeance if you sign your name and blood on this piece of paper. Kind of like Spawn. Yeah. So uh, he decides to do it and the devil or... Spoiler alert, it's Mistopheles, the devil. He drops these two gauntlets down on the ground, and he puts them on, and it's like the most generic Wolverine-style claws that, that are ever there. They come out just two heck of long blades, like four feet in length. And like Baraka. Yeah. They're heck of thin and flimsy, though. Very low-budget movie. Like the licorice. Yeah, the gay Wolverine. So he ends up getting his vengeance on killing the guy that killed his girlfriend. And then the devil's like, he goes to the devil and he brings him the heart of the guy he killed. And he's like, I'm done killing. This is my last time. And the devil says, oh, no, you're not. You have to go do this for me. But first, eat that heart. So he's like, no, I don't want to eat it. And he ends up eating the heart of oh, the wow. guy he killed. So he goes to this 
he, it doesn't really show it. He's telling the story to the psychiatrist in the mental institution. He went to this uh, townhouse or something, and he said he had to kill all these people for the devil, and he referred to them as demons. And he said he didn't think he would he would be able to stop killing because it felt so good, but he said he stopped it and basically turned his back on the devil because he didn't finish killing everyone. And so the devil saw this as betrayal. And no. Yep. Put him in a grave, buried him alive. And all of a sudden it flashes to him being in hell. He's like still sitting there bound. And there's a skeleton on top of him with these heck of long legs. And then he, of course the devil buries him with his gauntlets. He puts the gauntlets on and he kills the skeleton, the cheap old like army of darkness skeleton. And then he emerges as Faust or Faust. On the tombstone it says AUS and it has like two strikes on the right, left and one on the right. And then he he holds up his blades and the shadow makes forms the F and the T between them. It's heck of cheesy. <laughs> Then why'd you choose it? Because it's a hack type movie. It's different. <laughs> okay. But but he comes back as Faust, and he's actually like a demon. He like has all these this makeup on, and he looks pretty cool. Okay. Uh, my number five is going to be The Incredible Hulk, mm. made in 2008. Yeah. Not the Ang Lee one. Ugh. That stupid Hulk movie with... Uh, who even played Bruce Banner in that one? I don't even remember. Eric Vanna. Ah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I chose the Edward Norton version uh, because that's really where I think they were able to get a lot of Hulk characteristics right. Uh, they had Tim Roth who played the... Was he the Abomination in that yeah. movie? And, uh, yeah, of course, I'm saying Hulk smash at the end is the best part. Do you remember when Tim Roth got the injection for Abomination? He thought he was badass and walked up to the Hulk. Yeah, and he, and Hulk just like crushed him. <laughs> he kicked him, and he went tumbling, rolling into a tree. It was heck of funny. Yeah. So that was my number five. My number four is TMNT. Oh, okay. The cine, the CGI. I haven't seen that one yet. It's heck of cool. Basically, the turtles have to. Uh, there's thirteen demons that get released, and they have to hunt them down, and. Uh, there's a little twist at the end, but it's it's cool. I really liked it. Do the turtles turn into big, huge super turtles like on the new cartoon? They do that uh, on. The, it's not the new new cartoon, the one that were that the, the bunch of cranks, but it's the one before that. And they like, I think they turn into big, huge, huge super turtles. And I was like, this is ridiculous. Yeah, it's dumb. Yeah, but I, I did read that on TMNT. It shows Shredder's helmet at it, the end. Yeah. That's, yeah. Shredder and Crane's like the best villains. On yeah, the they're supposed to do a sequel to it featuring Shredder, but they never did it. They just did a remake, I think. They're remaking it. My number four is going to have to be Batman Returns. With, uh... What? Yeah. With Penguin? With Penguin and with uh, Catwoman. Oh, uh, alright. Because, uh, it was... Like, growing up, seeing Batman, okay, that was cool. I didn't really like the Joker, but then when Batman... I, I didn't like Jack Nicholson's portrayal of the Joker. No, neither did I. It was, it was retarded. Yeah. It was stupid. Uh, but it was really dark with Catwoman and with uh, Penguin. Just, that I think that's what drew, drew me to it. It had uh, Christopher Walken in it. Oh, yeah, it did. And... Michael Keaton is still one of my favorite Batmans. Yeah, he's, I think, number two for me. Yeah, he... The only thing I don't like about Christian Bell is how he does the lisp. <sighs> yeah, <sighs> like, I don't like the, the how he changes his voice either. Yeah. And his costume didn't look as cool as Batman from 1988 Batman. No, it didn't. So what's up with this new Batman? Ben Affleck? Yeah. I think, I think people are making a bigger deal out of it than it is. I mean... Of course, he sucked in Daredevil, but it's going to be Batman. I'm sure it's going to be a Batman-Superman flick, yeah. so I'm sure he'll do it right. I think it's all about the writing. Like, the Daredevil movie sucked because it wasn't written well. Uh, if they would have... And the costume was stupid. Yeah. They could have made it better. But as long as you have good writing, 
the any it's easier to fall into the part of Bruce Wayne or Batman. Except the writing could be phenomenal if George Clooney played Batman again. Mm. It would just be stupid. You think so? I, I don't think I could see George Clooney as Batman again. What about Val Kilmer? Him neither. He's so bloated right now. <laughs> he looks like someone left him in the swimming pool for three days. <laughs> Have you seen him recently? No, Have I Have you seen McGruber? No, I didn't see McGruber. Oh, man. That that has the the best death ever. <laughs> Do you want me to tell you about it? No. You... I'll, I'll watch it eventually. Okay. It, it's like a funny... So yeah, Batman Returns, yeah. and there was something um, when I was when I saw the um, Michelle Pfeiffer lick Michael Keaton's face. Uh, there's something in me that was like I felt shameful to watch it. Like I was like, oh, because I guess it was like exposure to to sex or something. Uh-huh. But then I because I was like, why is she licking his face? I was all curious and stuff, but uh-huh. I thought that was pretty cool. Is is that where your fascination comes from of wanting to see a wife lick milk out of a bowl? I don't want. I, I, it's water, not milk. Oh, <laughs> probably. But wearing cat ears. Probably. Because you got a boner off of Michelle Pfeiffer as Catwoman. I remember. You're always talking about her. When? Oh, uh, like in elementary school. No, I don't remember that. No, I do. Well, that's probably why then, because she licked Batman's face. Mm-hmm. My number three uh, is Man of Steel. Oh, yeah, I still haven't seen that. Oh, that's a really good movie. Better than Superman Returns? Way better than Superman Returns. I fell asleep during Superman Returns. I couldn't even watch it. I still haven't watched it fully. That's such a dumb movie. I read that as 157 minutes. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, but Man of Steel was good. The fighting in it's amazing. Uh, just what they do in it, you 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 watch and you say, "This is how a Dragon Ball movie should look." Oh, that's tight. yeah. The fighting is just insane, and the story is good. There's flashbacks that tell the tale of him being younger. It's very good. I won't talk a lot about it because you haven't seen it. My number three is gonna have to be Super. That movie is hecka tight with Rain Wilson. Yeah, uh, not really a superhero. He's he. Put, it's like Hick Ass. Yeah. He's a super he plays a superhero with no powers, except he has the best weapon of all time. A wrench. The pipe wrench from Bioshock. <laughs> yeah. And his catchphrases? Shut up, crime. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see this movie recently? No. Oh, okay. I just remember it and I just remember it being very dark. Uh, I, I remember it being darker when I saw it I was like, This is darker than Kick Ass. Yeah, it's crazy dark. And you know, basically, Rain Wilson plays a Christian guy who's trying to find his purpose in life. His whore of a girlfriend, Liv Tyler, who actually is a real whore in real life. Oh, really? Yep. Why do you say that? Because she is. You have any evidence to back that up? No. Okay. <laughs> and she gets... He comes home from work and she's with her old druggy friends, her, her pimp boss, whatever he is. And she's all like telling him to go away because she's getting high and stuff. And then they take her and abduct her and he just tries to save her. And he gets his ass beat. And so he prays to God what's his purpose in life. And he has a vision where God takes the top of his head off. Wipes it clean with the squeegee and puts his head back on. Wipes his brain clean. And then he just becomes a superhero called the Crimson Bolt. He he makes his own costume. It's a big red costume. And Ellen Page in it plays uh, Bolty, his sidekick. Yeah. <laughs> she pretty much rapes him in yeah. the movie. And she's like, oh, it's all gooey and squishy. And he's all like, no, you're... I think she was eight. She was like 18 or something. And he was like 30, 40 something years old. And she hecka wanted him, so she raped him. And then he... Ends up going to the pit boss's house, and it's just a real dark movie. And yeah, that I, that ending really escalated quickly. It did. <laughs> what happens with Bolty? I was like, dang. Yeah. So I'm not going to spoil it for you guys, but if you guys haven't seen Super yet, it's a real good movie. Have you seen Special? No. You remember that one guy who was uh, on Friends? Phoebe's boyfriend. He was a cop. No. Oh. Well, he plays this guy who 
takes this medication and it's called special I think and it turns him into a superhero mm -hmm. in his head so he's like he's basically doing all this outstanding things but um, it's all in his mind like he says look guys he's talking to his friends I could run through the wall and he runs through the wall and it shows him vanish and then it shows his friend's perspective and he's laying on the ground with a bloody nose <laughs> <laughs> Jamila and I watched that, and we were like, "This is heck of fun." Is that on Netflix? Yeah, okay, I I'll, think so. I'll check it out. Uh, the only reason I brought that up is because I always get super and special mixed up. Oh, okay. My number two is the Dark Knight. Yeah. My number two, I put it was the whole new Batman mm -hmm. trilogy with Christian Bale. Yeah, the whole, all three of them are really good. The only reason I picked out Dark Knight. Is because of Heath Ledger's performance of the Joker, but I know I didn't even think uh, the Dark Knight Rises would be able to outshine the Dark Knight, but it's right up there with it. It was just as good. Yeah, uh, Heath Ledger's performance in there. He died before the movie came out, so when at the end of the movie, I just felt so down because I knew that he couldn't be in the next one because he did such a great job. Everyone still likes that old Mexican guy. What's his name? From who? TV Batman? I have no idea who. Hector Rodriguez. <laughs> they all like, oh, I like that portrayal of the Joker. You know what? Fuck you. The The new Joker with Heath Ledger is blows all the other Jokers out of the water. Yeah. For some reason, my mind's trying to think of hit that guy's name. Uh, it's like I know it, like I've heard it before. Was it like Alfonso something? I don't know. I don't know. But he was Mexican, though, right? He has a Mexican name? I think so, yeah. Okay. My number one is The Amazing Spider-Man. Th that's the new one, right? Yeah. The lizard? Yeah. yeah. That one's really good. Even though the lizard didn't look as reptilian as he should have, he looked more humanish. That was such a good movie. Uh, he, I think he was the best portrayal of spider-man way better than toby mcguire or whoever else i don't, even, I don't know who else even tried to play spider-man live action i don't think anyone i think where toby mcguire messed up was when spider-man 3 came out and he did that whole emo thing when he had the <laughs> black suit that whole black suit <clears throat> spider-man was stupid it was all wrong the design was off venom was it was such a disgrace to venom I was when Topher Grace pulled off his head and was like, as soon as he said I instead of we, I was like, this is bullshit. Yeah. This movie sucks. Because Venom, he's a symbiote. He won with Eddie Brock, and instead of saying I, they usually say we because mm -hmm. they're two entities together. And I was just like, are you kidding me? Yeah. And when they first announced it, I thought Thomas Hayden Church was going to play Venom, which would have been cool because he's kind of buff. Mm-hmm. But when they were like two for grace, I was like, "Are you serious?" Stupid. Eric Foreman's playing Venom. <laughs> Where's Red Foreman? So he <laughs> slapped him in the back of the head. <laughs> Call him an ass. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh, what's his name? Eric? No, Boddicker. Clarence Boddicker. Clarence Boddicker. Don't <laughs> yeah. fuck around. <laughs> From RoboCop. You know, on, on that '70s show, he, he had to have walked in that that show and been like. You know what, Kitty? I fucking played Clarence Boddicker. You better listen to me. <laughs> or just throwing out some of his catchphrases from Robocop. Yeah. So that's what I had as my number one as well. Oh, okay. Uh, I had a few honorable mentions. I had X-Men Origins Wolverine as an honorable mention. The only reason I, he didn't make my list is because he really hasn't... In all the X-Men movies he's been in, he's never really went berserk. Mm -mm. And... That's something that's a staple with Wolverine that I haven't agreed with is, yeah, in the X-Men mansion on part two, he stabbed his claws in someone and some security guy and was all pissed off about it, but he, and, and even in the cartoon, he went berserk when he fought the Sentinels on uh, on the season finale of the first season. Yeah. When he was he threw Gambit out or whatever and was fighting all the Sentinels, he yeah. fought like 20 Sentinels and killed them all. Yep. And he's just, like, badass right there. I mean, Hugh Jackman, 
could pull off a berserker moment. He just hasn't yet. Hopefully, I haven't seen the new Wolverine. I'm assuming he doesn't do it there. Hopefully, in days of future past, he will. Yeah, I, I've yeah his performance pretty lackluster for, as Wolverine. I mean, he makes a good Wolverine. His potential is really good. I think that ties to the writing, though. Yeah, they haven't written a, a his berserker barrage in there or whatever. Yeah, that's just bullshit. I mean, Wolverine is known for going berserk and just, you know, be like, fuck this. I'm going to go fuck everybody up and kill everyone. <laughs> Let me stab Cyclops real quick for good measure. <laughs> Cyclops, such a douche. <laughs> um, and, and the only moment, uh, I mean, the, the only thing that they showed him being badass about is when on X-Men Origins, when they asked him to join, and he's like, fuck off. Yeah. That's like the only thing, that's like his most badass moment. That's pretty sad. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he, he goes up and kills the helicopter on Origins, but what what else are you going to He has adamantium claws at that point. He could do anything, and they just have him kill the hel- helicopter. <laughs> like, the helicopter's alive. <laughs> he wouldn't kill the helicopter. Well, I didn't all over mention, but it was Ghost Rider. Yeah, I, I I was gonna put that, but I haven't seen that yet. You haven't seen Nick Cage's Ghost Rider? Uh-uh. Oh man, he. I just recently kind of watched part two, and I was in and out doing something else. I think I was falling asleep because Willie was in here watching it with me, and I really didn't get to watch all of the Spirits of Vengeance. I was hoping Vengeance would come. He's not in it. No. Oh, that's retarded. Why not that I... I know of. I I didn't see him in there. Idris Elba is in it. Who's that? Some British actor. And I thought he was going to be Vengeance, but he wasn't. They, like, set it up for him to be, but I don't think he, he is. Yeah. Uh, I had on my uh, honorable mention is um, Jerry and Silent Bob's Super Groovy cartoon movie. Oh, yeah. Because that, that's the movie where I decided I wanted to do podcasts, where Kevin Smith did the podcast afterwards, and he's just like... Share your passion, share it with the world, it's so easy to do, and I was like, you know what, he's right, we could do this. So, I put that down. Another reason I didn't put the X-Men movies in my top five is because of Juggernaut on X-Men Last Stand. Stupid. I mean, they they had a good guy playing him, but the costume looked ridiculous. Yeah, it was retarded. It was so retarded. And he, he's just like sitting there, the Juggernaut bitch, that was like, I laughed hella hard at that point, because I just watched that movie, but... <laughs> Or the, the YouTube video of the Juggernaut bitch, but other than that, I was like, "Are you serious? He's going to get defeated by Kitty Pride?" And he doesn't even have mutant powers in the comic. He gets his power from like the crystal of Cyderac or Cyrac or the something. Enron crystal or something. Yeah, and late or whoever that little boy was wouldn't have been able to drain his mutant power because he wasn't a mutant. Yeah, and he just ran into the wall. And it's dumb. That that's why you need to get comic book geeks to write scripts. Yeah, well, I don't know why they haven't figured that out. They, they get all these, like, stupid-ass writers writing it for them, like, oh, you know, they did such a good job on the English patient, let's go have them do a comic book. Like, that's what, in, in Evening with Kevin Smith, he was told to rewrite, what, Superman? To help write Superman, yeah. And he put all this stuff in there, and they were like, uh, we're not gonna do that. We'll have Superman fight a giant spider. Yeah. <laughs> wild, wild west. Yeah, but Knight Rider, or Ghost Rider is pretty cool. Uh, Nick Cage plays a good good character there. Yeah, I still think the Superman, or Spider-Man movies could have had great potential if they didn't do, if they did part three right. They just didn't, they just didn't care at that point. Sam Raimi didn't want to do any more and he was just like, I'm just going to fuck this movie up. That's how I f- feel that he did that movie. He was going in like, I'm not going to do this right. Yeah. So, let's go ahead and get into story time. Alright. Do you have any stories written down? That's tight. He shook his no. head. <laughs> Brad shook his head no. So, I've got a few. Uh, I actually wanted to talk about where our collecting bug came from. And our progression through collecting and uh, mainly with the the cards. So, what's your first memory of collecting cards? It's going to have to be the Marvel Annual cards. Yeah, of course there were like Garbage Pail Kids here and there, but that's not where it took off. Where it took off was in 1994, when we were in junior high, Marvel released 
trading cards called Marvel Annual 94, and it was just... It was made a, by Fleer, right? Yeah, Fleer. And it was just a culmination of the whole Marvel Universe from, I think it was just 1994, like a, look what happened in 94 kind of thing, where it took all the major points of the comic book and just put them out there. Oh, really? Yeah. I just thought they did them in different sets and just had characters from each set. Mm -hmm. Like, you had your blues were X-Men, your reds were Spider-Man. Then you had... When I say red and blue, I mean the borders were kind of... Blue, like, on the bottom was bluish. Like, the, where the name would be of, like, Venom. It would be a red border that said Venom. And then it showed a picture of Venom, of course. And uh, the first one was blue, which was X-Men universe and then they had well, I guess it's all one universe but they had X-Men is blue, Spider-Man is red purple was like Punisher maybe or 2099 I have it right there if yeah. we want to reach back and get it <laughs> it's on a table right behind us and Brad <laughs> looks like do I really want to get up and reach for this <laughs> binder <laughs> okay Oh, look at that. I remember these. The artwork is beautiful. And they were made on thick cards, not like, um, you know, those little flimsy magic cards. They were thick. So, I think we need to change these sleeves out. Yeah, those sleeves have been there since 1994. You haven't changed them out? No. <laughs> oh, I thought you did. Yeah, so we have X-Men is dark blue. Uh, it starts off with Jean Grey. I don't know why. It starts off with Jean Grey. She's such a, like, big name. I don't, I don't get it. I think she's dumb. She's retarded. Probably because she's redhead. Everyone gets boners off of redheaded people. Pat. <laughs> yeah. Um, we took our mom out to her birthday dinner last night to Red Robin. And I told the waitress, I said, you see that ginger over there? It's her birthday. You didn't say that. No, I was going to, though. Uh, we got Sabretooth on here. Skin. How's he part of? He must be in 94. I don't know. Uh, Legion, Jubilee, Omega Red, he was heck of tight. Mr. Sinister, I don't know why he's not before. Phalanx. Oh look, they have Dark Phoenix, or Phoenix way over here, number 40 something. Yeah, we'll, put, we'll have to put pictures up with these. And then remember, uh, Grandma, she saw Rogue. Oh, is that, is that who she saw? Yeah. And she was like, why do these women all have all these big chests? <laughs> like, I, I didn't even notice it at the time. Oh, yeah, look. neither did I. Oh, look, Broken Claws, a picture of Wolverine when he gets his adamantium taken out, comes before Rogue, which doesn't make sense. It's just, it's just called Broken Claws. Did you see a gambit? Yeah, Gambit's on the first page. Oh, okay. Then there's Bishop, Deadpool, Juggernaut. Then it goes into Red, Spider-Man. They have the red border here. Um, Judas Traveler, don't know who that is. Demogoblin, who has Maximum Carnage. Venom. Venom was heck of hard to find. Yeah. It, it, he was like a rare. Of course, these cards don't have rarities on them. These came nine in a pack, I believe, and you had a chance to get these chase cards. And this was our first Orange's Hulk. Okay. Namor. Namor. Oh, I thought you said name some more. Oh. No, yeah, Namor. Namor is in Hulk, huh? Purple, that's the 2099. And then we called the comic book guy on Broadway's Comics and Cards. And we'd always used to say, you know, we've got a uh, Wolverine number one. How much is that worth? And then he'd just say, stop calling me. Because <laughs> we were like, we have a gold foil cover of X-Men number one. <laughs> and we just wanted to hear him say, oh. And of course, he knew we were full of it. And we asked him what the hardest card to get was. And he said the specialist. Is that... Is that true? I have no idea. Oh. I don't think so. Green. I don't even know who these people are. Quicksilver is in green. Why isn't he with blue? Morbius, the human vampire, the living vampire. Ghost Rider, Blade. Iron Man. 
Yeah, these are, but then you get over to the, you get through all the, the normal cards, then you get to the chase cards, where they have the duo blast, the power blast, and there are these foil cards, and there's uh, 24 in a set of the power blast, I believe, and then you, you have chromiums, oh, remember chromiums, mm -hmm. which are like special foil cards, they're a little bit thinner than their counterparts, I believe. Oh, and we'll put these pictures up on our Facebook page, Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. Go ahead and like us on there and on iTunes as well. And we have a Twitter. Uh, you could tweet too, which is Nostalgic Hunter. We're not very active on Twitter, though. We need to get active on it. Yeah. What, who's that, what's up with that one um, poser guy? Hmm. Was it it's like Nostalgic Hunt or something? Oh, yeah, there's someone else who made a Twitter, like, kind of like ours... Uh, after I think the account was created like the end of May and we started this at the beginning of May so I don't know if it was just coincidence or what but there's an, a, a pseudo treasure hunting for nostalgia guy out there and he always posts about Nintendo games yeah but the then you, there are three dual blast cards which we have uh, they're hologram or they're foil on both sides and they have spider-man on one side scarlet spider on the other the next card is Punisher twenty ninety nine, and then Vendetta. Never heard of her. And then Iron Man on one side and War Machine on the other. So we had always used to beg our mom for five dollars to buy a pack of cards. Yeah, those and they sold them at Seven Eleven, right by our school, and at Kmart too. And there is this one. There is this one fag who stole our cards. <laughs> And uh, he uh, was named John Taylor. John Taylor, and we knew it was him. Uh, what happened was we used to put our backpacks down at lunch, and we'd used to like wrestle and stuff with other kids. And we know that he stole our binder because he was jealous of how many cards we had. Yeah, because he collected it too, but he didn't have as big of a collection. And he always bragged about being rich and living in hotels. Yeah. And so, yeah, that that guy, and um, I found him on Facebook. Did you? Yeah. You messaged him? I sent him a friend request and said, I want my my uh, cards back. Did you really? Yeah. He accepted my friend request, but he didn't respond. Oh, wow. I should get on him too then. But yeah, that's... Yeah. So we got... But collecting those cards and getting the chase cards, I think that's what started it because we got so addicted, addicted with it and we were like, we need to have all these freaking cards... And we almost have all of them. We only mm -hmm. need, like, a few left to complete the set. I'd li really like to find those. Yeah. If we find unopened packs, that'd be awesome. You can find them on eBay. Can you? Yeah. I They had a full box that sold on eBay for, like, 30 bucks. Really? Yeah. <sighs> we need to get some. All right. I'll, I'll, keep, take a, I'll keep looking. Okay. And uh, I'll just buy a box if I see it. Oh, I just got a new text message. From who? Terrence. Letting me know it is. I'll read his text message. He's our gay friend who's uh, who's Catholic. Today is the feast of Saint Bartholomew, apostle of the Lord, flayed alive for faith of Christ. Wow, flayed alive, flayed alive for the faith of Christ. I wouldn't want to go that way, flayed, being flayed alive. But the feast of Bartholomew. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna give my wife a feast. <laughs> we should go to Fuji and celebrate. <laughs> I was thinking more along of dirty thoughts. Oh. Okay. So I started with the X, the Marvel Annuals, Fleer, and then where did it take off from there? Well, it kind of went to magic. In ninth grade, we started playing magic and collecting magic, and that was when the Mirage set came out. So we would, our mom would take us to. Um, Empire Comics is that what it's called? Yeah, and she'd buy us a booster pack uh, or a boost starter box. You got sixty cards in the starter box, and that's all we bought. And little did we know it would it would would have been better off if we bought booster packs. But we yeah. didn't really know about collecting back then. Yeah, I remember she came home. She was on her way home from our grandma's house, to live in South Sac, and she always took the long way. She never took the freeway. She went through William Land Park. Went through. Broadway, downtown, all the way up to Northgate, Norwood. So, 
we begged her every time, can you bring us back some magic cards? She did. And she, there's one time she brought back two packs. And we got the Granny Totem in one of those packs. And we were like, Granny Totem! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> and that was a rare card, huh? Yeah. And then from that, I think it went to Pokemon. Oh, yeah. That's where it went. That's where it skyrocketed. Because, and we would have been collecting magic, but all of a sudden a new set was going to come out. Yeah, and we were like, we don't... There was like a whole, like fifteen other sets that came up before Mirage, and we were like, "There's no way we could get all these cards." Yeah, well, we we only co collect Mirage. Yeah, we only collect Mirage, and our friend Josh Trump was like, "Ooh, why do you only collect Mirage cards? That's a, that's a weak set." <laughs> and uh, even when I told Brian Cheryl, who is real into magic, um, he was like, "Vision is coming out." I was like, "What's that?" He's like, "New magic set." Out. What? A new magic set? No, I'm, we're not gonna play that. He's like, why not? Isn't it, aren't you excited? I said no. I remember that Mer Vision came after Mirage, and I was just like disgusted. Yeah. Like, why would you collect anything else other than Mirage? <laughs> yeah, because Mirage had everything. They had the Tika Dragon. They had the Firexian Dreadnought, didn't they? Mm -hmm. They had the Firexian, the Hammer of Bogarden. I don't think they had Firexian Dreadnought. They didn't. No. Uh oh. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, and uh, so we we just got disgusted. I just remember feeling, I don't know why I felt such sh like disgust when I, because like, we were betrayed by magic. Yeah, but we we only knew about the Mirage set, so they didn't really betray us. That's just how it went. Yeah. So then when Pokemon came out, oh man, I remember you brought it. I was with um, my wife at the then time, my girlfriend Karen's house. And you brought it over and taught me how to play, and I was like, just blown away. Was this um, when we would, where we go, like the sharing place to play it? No, I think we were in her room. Oh, okay. And you were showing me, and I think Matt was there too. And you're like, you get this Pokemon coin that you, it's heads or tails. And Chancy. <laughs> Chancy, you could get, you could flip, and your Pokemon will be asleep. And you could bring out the Charmander and bust out the Charmeleon on it. I was like, oh, this is awesome. Yeah. Pokemon was hecka tight. Uh, it was pretty expensive. Like some places were selling it eight nine dollars a pack, but we always got ours from Toys R Us. And then I remember, uh, Mom gave me twenty dollars to go get our haircut. Yep. And it was what um, what seven dollars each at the time, and then the rest we were supposed to give for tip or something. Yeah. So we got our haircuts, and then you were like. Let's save our money. Let's let's not tip them. No, I, I, I always I always tipped. I think it was you. Yeah, we, we went to this one place called Tanya's Booty Salon on Northgate, and they cut our hair for like years, like ten years. The same two Asian people, Tanya and Fiona. And you would always get Tanya, and I always get Fiona. Tanya didn't know how to cut my hair like Fiona did. Mm -hmm. So we were like. We're not going to give him a tip. We're yep. going to save our money for Pokemon cards. Yep. And we walked out of there. And didn't Mom go back in there and give her a tip or yeah, something? Yeah, she did. Yeah. Like, because I, I think Karen took us. Yeah. And so we got our hair cut. And then she took us over, I think, to Kmart or something. And we bought Pokemon cards. Yeah. And Mom was like, where'd you get those cards? Later on, we didn't tip him. We were laughing. And she went over and tipped him. And th I think that's the time when the the jungle fossil came out or was it jungle jungle and we bought the starter thing for jungle yeah yeah but pokemon was tight i remember uh i wanted to get a job in senior year solely to buy pokemon cards yeah i got a job at kmart but i don't think i bought pokemon cards i think i was already done with the fate the fad yeah we had already gotten the charizard we were like done yeah once you get charizard i still have that charizard mm-hmm So then next it went into uh, Dragon Ball. Yep. That is where it, th that's still the deal. I remember I was at Target and I saw Dragon Ball consists of, at that time there were Saiyan Saga set, Frieza Saga, and Trunk Saga. And I bought in Trunk Saga sets, uh, two starters, um, both hero, I believe. I got Goku and Vegeta. And... Uh, some packs and I took them to How Park 
Yeah. And it was Matt's birthday, wasn't it? Or some, Jose's, Jose's birthday. Jose's birthday. Yeah. I said, look what I found. And Brad was like, are you kidding me? They have Dragon Ball cards you could play with. And from there, it was just... It was on. I remember seeing that in an actual wizard magazine, the Dragon Ball CCG. And I was like, oh, that's cool. That'd be cool to play. And But I never found them anywhere. Mm-hmm. So, yeah... Uh, just ton of collecting for Dragon Ball. We uh, we were collecting. Un- there's two versions of each set: limited and unlimited. Kind of like first edition and unlimited for Pokemon. Um, and we we're at. We went to a tournament. We used to buy booster packs all the time. Didn't care if it was limited or unlimited. And then met Josh Mulder, and he was like, "Ew, why do you have unlimited in your binder?" And I just felt so ashamed. <laughs> and after that, I was just a full limited collector. I was like, all this unlimited garbage. Get out of my binder. Yeah, we went to our first Dragon Ball tournament at Adventures in Comics and Games. And that's where we were introduced to David Rounds. Super nice guy. Mentally challenged. But he's not like full tard. He's only like He's kind of like, he's got some sense to him. He, he knows like how to buy stuff, how to sell stuff, things like that. But when it comes to rules and games, he don't know jack. And I remember Brandon and I were so nervous. And we were like, what, 25? Yeah. At this tournament with kids and David Rounds. Who was no, like, there, were, there was only a few kids. There was like a teenager. Okay, <laughs> that's a kid to me. <laughs> So David Rounds is there. He's the only other adult there who's like 40. I don't know how old he is. He's balding already. But he's there with... And we were nervous because we didn't know what decks people were going to be playing with. I had built a Red Anger deck, which basically is a speed deck. Brandon built a Saiyan deck, which is a beatdown deck. So we're, we went up to David Rounds, who we thought was participating in the tournament. And we said, what deck are you playing with? And he didn't say anything. So, so then we walked away and we're like, dude, that, that guy's fucking hardcore. Yeah, because right he there. had heck of cards. He had like binders of cards and he had ultra rares too. And we were like, dude, we need to worry about this guy. This guy. And it was just like a little Dragon Ball tournament, like with 12, 14 people. Yeah. So, uh, tournament starts. I ended up winning the tournament and there's like, I was felt so excited at that point, but Brandon. And, and David didn't even play in the tournament. <laughs> yeah, he didn't play in the tournament. Uh, and he, he, when he did play in the tournament, though, he just did not know nah. what... Like, I felt sorry for everyone who played against him because it was, like, the slowest match possible. So I remember um, I, I was playing against him. I was like, oh, I got to fight against David this time. And I was like, okay, I'll hit you with Saiyan Flying Kick. It does 82 life cards worth of damage. <laughs> yeah. With the maximum amount of life cards you could do, like, between 4 and 10 depending on how strong your card is. I was like, this does 82 life cards of damage, you're dead. He was like, oh, darn it, better luck next time. Yeah. And then he just, you know, he, it was just so funny. And didn't you forget your, a Dragon Ball, like, to put in your deck? Th- this was horrible. I was playing one time, I was rearranging my deck, and my main way to win that time was, it was a Namekian regeneration deck that won by Dragon Ball. Uh, at that time, I haven't... I didn't uh, do my full Dragon Victory deck. That came when Brawly came out with his Speed Anger, but we'll get into that later, I guess. Or maybe not. Uh, But I forgot a few key cards to win in my deck, so I had... In order to win, you could either deck out your opponent by taking all their life cards. How Anger works is you raise to your highest personality. You have... Uh, level 1 through 5 or 1 through 3 at minimum and if you get to your highest personality you win that way or by controlling all 7 Dragon Balls I had like, and you could only have 1 Dragon Ball in your card or 1 t- one co- each Dragon Ball in your deck so you could have only 1 through 7 you can't have duplicates yeah you could only have 1 like Earth Dragon Ball 1 1 Earth Dragon Ball 2 etc I played with Namek Dragon Balls isn't so, it etc what I say etc is it etc 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 okay um 
So I had like a Dynamic Dragon Ball 1, like two Dynamic Dragon Ball 2s. I had duplicates. I had an illegal deck basically. And I was playing against this kid. I was like, all right, I, I was totally making up rules. I, said, I play this card. He's like, what does that do? I said, it, let, it lets me pull out three Dragon Balls from a deck. He's like, oh, that's a good card. So I, you know, I after like a few turns, all right, I win. I had to go fix my deck. Yeah, so you're lucky to go up against a, like a knowledgeable player because yeah. they would have called you out on it. You yeah. lost the round. Yep, I would have. So collecting Dragon Ball cards, they have ultra rares they don't just have rares they have an ultra rare which was nearly impossible to get our friend who runs the comic shop at adventures of comics game avram he opened i believe six cases of dragon ball saiyan saga packs and did not find one ultra rare and it's 12 box per case 36 packs per box yep so yeah you could do the math and find out they're very hard to get and that's why most of them are worth the most money because they're so hard to find and that's what we love doing we love getting Dragon Ball packs getting ultra rares and selling them because whatever we don't have in our collection we sell but and then they have a foil variant of every card so we have binders of foil cards that, from every set and there was one guy on eBay who was selling I think his name was Cats Info or something he was selling 120 packs for $80 at first. And the first time we got those, I think we pulled three ultra rares. Yeah. It, it was it was pretty tight. But now he sells them like <clears throat> he got hit to the game. No, they were I think he sold them even cheaper than that. It was like 100 packs for $59. Yeah. And then over time he kept increasing it cuz people were just buying these packs left and right. So uh, yeah, they're very expensive now. He sells them for like ten for twelve dollars. It sucks. Yeah. You remember when? So speaking of Dragon Ball tournaments, Brad and I would whenever we went, we did always get like first or second place. Josh would sometimes win if he was there. In essence, he was a better player than I was, but he hardly went to the Dragon Ball tournaments because they were so far from his house and he didn't have a ride. But, of course, winning all these local tournaments got my head inflated, thinking I could win a, I could win a, a regional tournament, because they held for Dragon Ball Regional, National, and World Tournaments, and I was like, Josh was like, they're, they're doing a regional tournament in Los Angeles, Sacramento to Los Angeles is about five, five six hour drive. I was like, let's do it. And I was still living with mom at the time. Yeah, I remember you told mom you were, you were in college, right? And you told her that you had to go to Six Flags or something over the weekend. I, I think I might have said some. It wasn't a, a a full lie because I did have to go to a music for a music class. I had to go to a concert in San Francisco I believe so I think I told her I went there or was going there yeah so um, you went to the regional tournament and got your ass handed to you didn't you well let's talk about the story on getting there so the plan was to meet up with Josh because him and I were going to go together at 10 o'clock at uh, Adventures and Comics and Games 10 o'clock p.m. I should have just picked him up from his house. Because guess who was waiting for me in the parking lot at Adventure of the Comics and Games? Who? Mom and Matthew. Oh, did, were, were they? Yep. Mom said, You're driving to Los Angeles? <laughs> <Matt>. <laughs> and Matt was sitting there with his arms crossed, right? Yep. Like, you just got told on me. Yeah, yeah, he told on me. And I was like, and so at this point you're living under mom's house so mom's house mom's rules yeah yeah so and i had only been driving for maybe a few months yeah and she was like you are not driving to los angeles or uh, somehow we ended up going i don't know what like what ha what i said or what was transpired well you kidnapped josh he was 17 at the time 
and you kidnapped him because his parents didn't know where his he was. His parents did not know he was coming with me. <laughs> and I remember, I at, that night when you left, I went over to mom's house and it was like late at night, and she was talk, talking to Josh's dad, and he was like, "Do I need to press charges?" Oh, really? He was talk. He was talking like that. Yeah. You, my son is a minor, and he's taking him out of the city. <laughs> So you uh, were like child abduction at a tier list. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and here I'm thinking he told his dad where he was going and stuff. So uh, I, honestly, I didn't think we were going to go. We stopped off at Tower Records to buy some CDs. We spent like a half hour, 45 minutes in there picking out CDs. I bought like $60 worth of CDs. Damn, that must have been depressing. What? Set, like it's already ten o'clock. Exactly. That's that's home you're, mindset. You're going. You're at tower, just like sitting around. Like, are we gonna go? I mean, can we can we just hit the road? And you know, Josh is sitting there, got a free free ride, <laughs> free weekend. He wants to do whatever the fuck he wants. Yeah. So around eleven o'clock, we finally get on the road, and we're like, we're doing it. So we get on the road at like eleven o'clock, and. I don't want to fall asleep at the wheel because I've never driven for such a long time. So we stop off at the gas station and get... They don't even sell it anymore. It's, it was a little shop called Nodos. And that was the first time I ever drank a Rockstar. So I had a Rockstar with two shots of Nodos. I was wired. And it, what, is that like a five-hour energy? Yeah. Okay. But illegal now, probably. I thought they were like pills or something. Oh, what? It was pills. Yeah, because I remember chasing it with a rock star. And that was bad because I don't know how we didn't get pulled over. We had Metallica going. We had Chili Peppers going uh, down the I-5 freeway going 100, 120 miles an hour. Dang. I looked down and like, oh, man, I got to slow down. And going up that hill for the grapevine sucked because my... I had a stick shift, so I had to uh, like drop it down to second gear so it wouldn't uh, overheat. But we got to Los Angeles. It was around 3 o'clock. Mm -hmm. We made it in four hours. And first thing we did was uh, park at a hotel, and we were walking around looking for food. No place was open except for like a 24-hour drive-thru at Carl's Jr. And we walked through the drive-thru and they're like, you have to be in a car. So Josh flags down this woman, starts flirting with the, like this cougar as she drives us through the drive-thru. And we end up uh, getting some food and falling asleep in the hotel lobby. I had already booked a hotel previous, but not but for the night after, not the night getting there. So... Uh, we fall asleep in the lobby from 4 to 7 and the turn people are arriving for the tournament Josh is you know scouting people saying what you playing what you playing and he was playing he said he was playing orange or blue stasis he ended up switching his what he, what he told people playing he ended up getting like fourth place third or fourth place in the tournament I went two and four I suck, um, and I was just, he's like, I told you you should have played Namekian, and it was bad, I was all depressed, like, I went all the way up here, and I only won two two out of my four matches, two out of my six matches, I did get to play Ake, he was like the lead designer and play tester of the game, and ended up winning his, he, at the time, it was like an they're previewing Android decks, so he had like the Android uh, 13, you know, for Android 13 deck for Movie Seven or whatever. Yeah, and I I ended up beating him somehow, somewhere with my Janky Sane deck, and he let me pull from his cookie bag. The cookie bag was basically a bunch of rare cards. You could pull ultra rares. You could pull Judge promos, and it, I ended up pulling. <sighs> Total Defense Drill. Was it Total def No, it wasn't Total. It was some rare card that's worth like 100 bucks. But I pulled Total Defense Drill at 
uh, San Francisco tournament, which we'll talk about. But that night, I was like, I'm going to go to bed. I haven't slept in so long. I get to the hotel and crash. And, of course, Josh stayed back to keep playing Dragon Ball with all his buddies that he met online. And I wake up to maniacal laughter in the hotel room. He is in the hotel room throwing a bunch of shit out the window. <laughs> Him and Rich Bondi. <laughs> Rich Bondi? Yeah. From Alaska. He's throwing coffee pots, soda, two liter soda bottles, um, a mirror hanging from the wall. I don't know how I didn't get charged for those damages. And, of course, they had security guards looking, you know, shining lights in. And I couldn't get up to save my life to get them to stop because I was so dead tired because I was up for so long. And I said, knock it off. And, of course, he jumped on the bed laughing like a little hyena. And when he runs out of stuff to throw out the, the window, he's running down the halls and getting everyone's discarded room service and bringing them back and throwing out the window. <laughs> It was horrible. It was a horrible experience. And then on the week we're driving back, he gets a bloody nose for some reason. Um, and then he's freaking out. Pull over, I got a bloody nose. I was like, don't be a baby, it's just a bloody nose. Don't be a bitch about it. Yeah. Man. So, and then on the way back, he's like, all right, I guess I'm going to call my dad. We didn't have cell phones at the time. I think he called Collect from a pay phone, and he, the dad was talking to me, and I was, he's like, so, I'm going to have to have a talk with you when I get back. I said, not really, because I, he told me that he told you that he, you knew he was going, and uh, that's the end of that, so. And that's the end of that chapter. Yeah, so I dropped him off and went my merry old way. Do you remember I house sat for him? For the yeah. Parents? Yeah, you house sat for him, and... You were supposed to make sure that Josh went to school every day that week. Yeah, and, and he didn't go at all, didn't he? he nope. He basically, uh, the par his parents went to Hawaii for a week, and they had to fight house it. And he didn't go to school for a week. We went to Red Lobster in Roseville or something, and he feigned food poisoning. So when the parents came back, we were like, oh, yeah, he's sick. He got food poisoning. And they were pretty upset he didn't go to school, but whatever. It was fun. We had uh, our other Dragon Ball friends over to play. Uh, John and Pissam came over. Didn't you come too? Uh, I don't think so. Oh, yeah. Maybe a couple. Maybe. I think maybe I did. Yeah, so we had some. We hung out there at the house and played Dragon Ball and barbecued. It was a pretty good time. So the second Dragon Ball tournament was in. Uh, San Francisco we went to, a regional in San Francisco. It was a year later, I believe, and I was more experienced, and my deck was pretty unusual. People, of course, it was one of a kind. There's, you know, internet posts about all these decks they thought were going to win, and I had this piece together deck that was able to counter pretty much everything at the time. I ended up doing pretty good at that tournament. Uh, I went four and two and top cutted the thir top thirty two, and uh, I wish I could go into more detail about all the matches that we had, but it would just go all o over your guys' head because of how not not much. I don't think any of you guys have played Dragon Ball. If so, hit us up and we'll discuss matches all the live long day. But I ended up making top sixteen and then losing because some guy cheated or something. Yeah. And uh, one tournament I did I wanted to talk about was the one we went to Yuba City. Oh, Yuba City! It was Yuba City is like a podunk place. You know they have a mall. It's called the Mall. They have a bank that's called the Bank. Real world, and they have a comic book shop called Heroes Hideout. I think it's called. Yeah. And so we were going around <coughs> getting new blood. Uh, a pre-release of one of the sets were coming out so a pre-release tournament is where everybody pays the commission fee I believe it's 20 bucks you get a free starter deck and three packs to build a deck so basically you have 25 minutes before the, the tournament starts you get your supplies 
you build the deck, and you play everybody has the same chance, kind of like a sit and go tournament. So, uh, everybody gets the same amount of cards, you build the best deck, some, of course you get different cards because you get three booster packs. Uh, Brandon and I and Josh went to the tournament the night before at Avram's, and I placed second. Should have placed first because Kid had an illegal deck, but whatever. I placed second. I do pretty good at pre-release tournaments. I thought you won that pre-release. The one at Abrams? Oh, oh, you're talking about Abrams? No. And then so we go to the Heroes Hideout and... Who had an illegal deck? Some little Hindu kid. What was wrong with it? Do you remember? He had in three Hercules drop, drop, drop kicks. And he's only one for deck? Yeah. Oh, okay. Unless played by Hercules. Okay. So, um... We go to Heroes Hideout, and we were like, can we sign up for a pre-release tournament? We were like jazzed on the whole pre-release thing, and they were the next turn the next shop doing it. So it was the next day, Saturday. Because we found out where they were doing it based on the website, the Dragon Ball website. Yeah. They announced it. Oh, Heroes Hideaway is, or Heroes Hideout is doing a pre-release here. Go ahead and go here. So I, I packed up Jordan. I had him. He was still a baby. He was like two or three. Put him in the stroller, took him up there, about an hour away from where I live. We drove up there, and we get there like two hours early or something. Yeah, it was hecka early. Because we wanted to make sure there was a spot, because only like 25 people could sign up for it. And so the owner there was being a real douchebag about it. He, he didn't like out-of-towners. You all, he, he saw the look of us. He was like, these people are here to fuck shit up. Yeah, we're here to fuck it up. So... He didn't like the look of the Outer Towners. He was like, I already have like 10 kids signed up for it. If there's room before it starts, I'll let you guys play in it. We're like, this is bullshit. We should, we were here first. We should be able to sign up. But no. So we're sitting there in the lobby. He doesn't think we're serious and we're going to leave. But no. We wait around, do some trading, do some talking. We feel like outcasts because everyone on, in the town's like, just shunning us. That's where we met Tess for the first time. Yeah. Tess. So, we're there. We're getting, you know, pretty much getting the silent treatment. Everyone's looking at us like outcasts. Are you going to talk about okay. Tess? So, we, we, the, the 15 minutes come and the tournament's going to start. So, we go on the right. Can we sign up for the tournament now? He's like, yeah, I guess. There's still room left. So, we sign up for the tournament. Winner gets a full box of the new set, the World Game Saga. Then second place goes, you know, half a box, whatever, so on and so forth, etc., etc. So the tournament comes around. I end up whooping everybody's ass. All the kids are like all just distraught. They never seen players such of our caliber, especially with the pre-release. They're like, "How do you make good decks with such little time?" We're like, "Natural, <laughs> natural talent, like natural bitches." So. Uh, finally, the final bout comes, and it's me and this little kid. I'm like, dude, are you serious? And I'm just like staring the kid down to intimidate him. <laughs> He's getting all shaken up, and I'm just like, come on, what are you gonna do? Play your next card. And he's like, uh, uh, uh. And so I end up beating him. Don't know how he got into top two. Must have been pure luck. And so the tournament. The, the the store owner who's again is a real fucking douchebag who I would spit on his shoes if I saw him on the street. Don't know remember what he looks like, but still, he get, he hands over the box of Dragon Ball cards, and then so they're like, okay, now all the little kids, can you open it now to see what you're getting? I'm like, no, I'm not opening it here. <laughs> I'm not opening all the packs here to see all the rest of the cards, and they're all like, oh, I'm like yeah, you guys shouldn't have gave me the silent tri treatment, huh? That's all right. I'll see you guys later. Well, who said that? Me. Oh, okay. And we just left. And we went home and opened it. And it was like the best because I remember showing all them Poda kicks how to... How to... How lose, to ball. How to ball in all day. <laughs> yeah, Tess was a kid who... he was, When we say kid, he was like 10 or 11. That's where he first met him. He was a, like a little slow kid. Like, who is this kid? And He wasn't slow. He has talked slow. He he talked very high pitched. Yeah, he hasn't hit puberty yet. He was sharp. He like knew all the cards. I don't know how he didn't win. He must mm -hmm. have had a, he must have pulled a bad personality or something. 
Mariko or something. <laughs> Mariko was tight. I would have chosen him over Goten any day. I, I won with Goten. I know. <laughs> so uh, we so we're at uh, the San Francisco tournament with a bunch of our friends, and we see the test kid. And so the test kid, of course, his mom drove him to everything, and she was into it too. She was into the Dragon Ball. And is that the one who we janked the cooler personality set for heck of cards? That was someone else. Oh, you mean the the trade of the? No, I in Roseville at A one, I traded a cooler set for a Vegeta the Revitalized. Oh, well, this kid um, was with his mom, and we were like, you could only get this cooler set if you buy the cooler video. They don't sell that anymore, and we had like five sets of them. And so his mom's like, you should trade, honey. This is the. You know, I remember that. Yeah, and we 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 buffooned him out of like twenty good cards. Yeah, like if we swindled that little fucker. Yeah. So, Tess, we call him Tess, I'll tell you why I call him Tess later, I don't know his actual name, but he had a really high voice like this, <laughs> and it was just hilarious whenever he'd talk, he'd be like, okay, now I'm going to use Saiyan Tower Kick and take away your life cards of damage, yeah. and I was just like, dude, hurry up and let your balls drop, pull those fuckers down, so, we're in the Dragon Ball tournament, and who's, am I playing against them, or are you? I didn't play against them. I think it was John. John was playing, <laughs> our friend was playing against him, and so there's this, yeah, it was John, <laughs> there's this card that's called Trunks Energy Sphere, which is a really good card, it, it's a staple, it should be a staple in all decks where it counters a combat card, uh, there's physical combat, energy combat, so just plain combat, and that's the only card that counters a combat card, right? Yeah, there's other cards that prevent you from playing combat cards, but that's the one that you use as a block against combat. Yeah. And that there that's the only card that does that. So uh John well, to N Z. There's some in G T. Yeah. So John's about to win the tournament if he could play this one comp not the tournament but the match against Tess. If he could just play this one card. And then all of a sudden the kid John's like, Okay, I play this card. I forgot what it was and he's like Tess <laughs> with his trunks energy sphere and he puts down the trunks energy sphere, T E S and he goes <laughs> like to block it and, it and I was just like are you serious and, and John didn't hear him say that and then I was like dude after the match it, I think John ended up losing <laughs> because of that card and I was like dude you just got test and he was like what are you talking about he's like, you didn't hear the kid he was like test <laughs> and John was busting up we were in the hallway just cracking up <laughs> just laughing for like five minutes and whenever we walked by we'd go test <laughs> yeah and the kid was like what, what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> and his mom was with him. It was so funny. His mom looked like Lynn Shea just get staring at us with daggers. <laughs> Detroit Rock City. Yeah. Yeah. That, but, but yeah, that that was hilarious. We collected Yu-Gi-Oh! for a while. I remember when Yu-Gi-Oh! came out, <clears throat> the packs were like $10. At, yeah, at any comic book shop, if you wanted a first edition Yu-Gi-Oh! pack, it was gonna, you were going to take $10 per booster pack. Or like twenty five per booster deck, yeah, and or I, starter deck. I remember the Yu Gi Oh cartoon was out like a, a half a year before that, and then when it finally hit U S shores, everyone was buying them up. It was like worse than Pokemon, and all these Yu Gi Oh cards started coming, and it was it was madness. I remember Brandon bought like three packs for thirty dollars or something, and he pulled an Exodia, the Forbidden one. Yeah, I think the leg. <clears throat> I got one, the, a leg or an arm. I think I got a leg. Yeah, and that's where... And you were like, this has rares, super rares, and ultra rares. I was like, what? Three and, different rare types? And secret rares. And the secret but rares. But we didn't find out about secret secret rare until I went to... Across the street from Brad's house where we had the bachelor party. He had like a Circle K. And they had Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Four dollars a pack. Yeah. I was like, oh, this is hecatite. So I bought a few packs. I think I got two packs. And pulled a Gaia the Dragon Champion. Don't know why that was a secret. Right? Yeah, it was a secret. It said like number one twenty five out of or one twenty six out of one twenty five or something. Yeah. And I like, oh, that's heck of tight. And I just had to, of course, had to get them all. I was like, these ultra rares are so hard to get, but it's so worth it when you pull one. It was tight. And the, the Yu Gi Oh cards, we stopped them for a while after we dried up with Yu Gi Oh. And then we started back up again once I found 
the Dark Arm Dragon. Mm -hmm. I bought a pack at Walmart just randomly and got our Dark Arm Dragon, which was worth like $200 at the time. Didn't even know it. it was a secret rare. And so that's when we started scaling. Yeah. Brandon found it, something <laughs> on the internet called scaling, where you actually weigh your Yu-Gi-Oh packs before you buy them, because the, the, the secret rare cards have a foil pattern on them, which is like 0.2 grams heavier, heavier than all the other cards. So we'd sit there and scale all the cards before we bought them and bought all the heavy packs. Yeah, we had to actually do it at like Walmart, because of course no comic book shop would let us come in and scale their packs. We even joked about it at Abrams. No, at A1. We were like, can we scale your pack? And he's like, <laughs> get the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> so we went to Walmart, and uh, we were scaling the packs. We've got so many dang foils and Judgment Dragons. And what happened was Walmart... We, we bought a food scale, huh? Yeah. That's the only way you can do it is buy a little food scale that goes to point zero 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 grams. And so... <clears throat> what we did was we'd buy a box from a comic book shop, scale out all the foils. We we buy two boxes, scale out all the foils left us with. It was 24 packs per box. We get about 12 to 18 foils. We'll put about 12 foils, and then we just combine the non-foil packs with each other to make a box and a set. box of just rare packs. Yeah, and so we'd sell. It was bad. It was evil. We'd sell a box of. Yu-Gi-Oh cards saying it's open um, open box 24 packs equals one booster box and people would buy them and get so pissed when they couldn't they couldn't ref refund them because they, they bought opened them yeah and didn't did you get ever get any hate mail on that like any bad references yeah or not any bad references I remember Konami got hip to the game of scaling and started putting their booster packs and blister cases, blister boxes. So that is this huge cardboard holder and a plastic case around well, they, it. Well, that's not why they did that. I think they did that for security reasons. You think so? Because yeah. remember they put started putting fake cards in the booster packs, like an extra card. Did they? An extra common card to offset the scale. Oh. Yeah, they were, they were jerks. Yeah, how <laughs> dare they? <laughs> Yeah, we won't do that anymore. Our scale broke. <laughs> we could always buy a new one. Man, we would hit... W the kids hated it. We'd drag Jordan Salmon with us. And Logan was there, too, as a baby in his car seat. And we'd go hit all the Walmarts, all the Targets, and buy up hella cards. And then we'd have whatever we didn't hit. No, we, we'd always hit it every time, huh? And we, we'd always either at least get a super rare... Ultra rare or secret rare. Yeah. Well, our, the scale was right on until they started messing with it by throwing an extra card in the pack and offsetting the scale. Yeah, and we used to drive, drive, and then when we'd get to a Target that wouldn't have any, we'd get so pissed. Target doesn't put theirs in blisters anymore. They don't? They're just packs? Hmm. Are there cards that still worth anything? Yeah. Yeah, they have. Mm -hmm. Pokemon, too. Really? Pokemon? There's cards that are worth that much? That it's worth it? I think so. The foils. Really? Yeah. Alright. Check that out. We'll check that out. Alright, that's going to end it for this week's episode of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. Uh, this is Brandon. This is Brad. Happy hunting. <laughs>